LeBron James is doing a Thursday Night Football alternate stream of The Shop tonight, I heard, ahead of uh, Titans Packers, hours from now. That's cool, but, I mean, we had it first. We had the idea first. Welcome to The Shop pregame show here on Up and Adams because I am shaving my producer's head bald today. I've never done this. I've never held one of these before. It'll be lots of fun, all while talking some football with Eric Weddle and Rich Homie Kwan. Gets it to Henry. Touchdown! The great Aaron Rodgers. I always do it with the better than you. To our show, we got Titans Packers in a couple hours. I feel like if I have this on, you know, I, my clothes are too big, so we're gonna put this on here really quick, and then we'll try to adjust it and make it okay. Uh, tonight, we've got a big game. I mean, AFC South, the Titans are leading. We talked about them a lot when I was in New York yesterday, and they are going to Green Bay to take on this Packers team. And this Packers team, of course, has some renewed energy around them right now, uh, you know, and it's something seems to have unlocked with this struggling Green Bay offense. Uh, and we'll get to that with Eric Weddle on the show, Hamilton joining me to break stuff down. And yes, we are shaving Conrad Company's head bald on this program. I think he's a little not happy. What do we want to use, a two? A two, a one, a three? He wants to use a four, which isn't happening, which is not going to even take any hair off of his head. I don't want to do a one because I don't even look like Carrie from the scary movie out here. I don't want to clip his ears or anything, but like a, a nice two, a nice two situation with Comrade Company, that is all coming up. But uh, the Packers win over the Cowboys, I do think was fueled by a little something extra. You had the emergence of Christian Watson, and you had the run game clicking, and I was talking about it all week. It was sort of a revelation for Packers fans, so hopefully it was a revelation for Aaron Rodgers as well. I think he saw the path that it's going to take for this team to be successful this season, and it will take some willing on his part to not put the entire game on his shoulders. I mean, the margin for error pretty much completely gone for this Packers team. They're sitting at four and six. That's an ugly number, four and six. They are a game and a half back of a wild card spot. Uh, so there isn't really more time to figure it out. There's not more time for, this might be the best thing that's happened to us as we head into Buffalo and lose. It doesn't happen. What happened in that Cowboys game has to translate. And what happened in that Cowboys game means nothing if LaFleur, if Rodgers and company don't all learn to sort of carry on with those lessons on an early week tonight and with Sunday night football at Philly Marissa after this ooh, that's a week 12 action there I do think uh, this is as close to a must win game I know I misses I misses must win game but this is about as close as it gets tonight for Green Bay take a look and it's not going to be easy for Rodgers or the run game the Titans do a few things well, but here's one of the things they do very well. They're the second ranked run defense. They're third in sacks, and they lead the league in both third down defense and quarterback pressure. It's the offense that's sort of vanilla and granola, but this defense is tough, and it's hard to find a tougher test for this Packers offense, and if they pass it, I will start to believe, <laughs> as I can't quit them for some reason. We talk about them too much on the show entirely. Too much Packers on this program. Uh, but for more on the Packers, <laughs> Let's bring in Matt Hamilton for some hammer time. Can't touch <laughs> What's up, Gay? How's it going? Can't touch I have the loudest jacket so, on uh, of all time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, talk to me. What do you want to talk? A little run game? Yeah, so um, we saw that, that Packers run game have a moment against the Cowboys and... Um, you know, we saw we saw the impact it was able to have on Aaron Rodgers as well. They, I know. they ran it yeah. twice as many times as they threw it, and we saw the best out of Rodgers, and I don't think that's a coincidence. I think we're, we're waiting for Do we have the video, Conrad? Are we good? We do not have the video. What, what can you tell me, Conrad? It's what? Uh, okay, well, I mean, do you like what I said about the Titans and their run defense? I think this is a, a real tough work for they're trying to load your video. Are we going to get it or are we not going to get it, I guess is the question. They're trying to get it. All right, uh, Hammy. I have confidence. I feel like we're going to get it. We'll get it. You'll get the video? I got okay, Chuko, put... Chuko climbed up here and fell asleep, too. You want to see Chuko? Yes! <gasps> this, is how, this is how this there man is. does his job. Are we joking there right now? Go. Marissa, yep. look at this. Yep. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Oh my god. That's uh 
Yeah. Okay, who are you picking in the game? Because it's probably going to, uh, we should have her, uh, yeah. we should have her pick my parlay. Maybe she'll have more success than me on what's going on. I'm not doing a parlay for tonight's <laughs> action. Um, but I do want to talk a little run game with you. Or just maybe is there something yeah. other than the run game we want to talk about before we try to get this footage happening? Just because I mean, it is going to be a tough test. Uh, but I expect Christian Watson to then thrive in this sort of a game. No Harold Landry. Yeah. Yeah, but that's the thing. The Titans have still, as you showed on that graphic, they've still been able to generate so much pressure, even without Landry. And it's a lot of creative blitz packages that Mike Vrabel's been dialing up. And one thing that I'm going to show in that in that breakdown <laughs> that was interesting is you started to see a lot of uh, single high looks that Rodgers was getting. And that's really atypical, I think, of any quarterback that I've seen Rodgers gets more too high looks than pretty much anybody. It's Rodgers and Mahomes pretty much always get too high looks because you don't want to give up the big plays them in the passing game. But with what that run game was able to do against the Cowboys, he was getting single high safety looks and he was picking it apart when they did decide to go through the air. So that's something that, um, you know, Tennessee is going to have to pick their poison a little bit. Do they commit to stopping the run game and bring that extra safety up and take their chances with Rodgers and this young group of receivers. And then it's will, it, you know, if the number two ranked run defense does what they can do, the question becomes, does it take the Packers away from what they're trying to do and what they were able to do successfully against the Cowboys, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's going to be, I think that's what's going to be the determining factor in this game. Um, and it's especially impressive what the Titans have done in, in the run game because they, they struggled out of the gate stopping the run. I don't know if you're a Saquon had that huge performance on them week one, and uh, they've really changed things up and, and become as good a team as there is defending the run in the entire league right now. Uh, if we can take your tweets, guys, at Up and Adam Show, Rich Homie Quan on the show, Eric Weddle is on the show. Should we take a break here and come back and try to re rack that video, or I'm not getting any, anything from the control room? I know, so what would you like me to do? Okay, we're gonna go to break. Hammer, you're awesome. Uh, stay tuned and stay here. We appreciate you and be patient. We will come back. I need that breakdown before this game. I need to know about Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon. I mean, they ran it 37 times in a touchdown against the Cowboys. Conrad, did you know that we're gearing up for another week of college football? You know how much I love college football, guys. What else can you tell me? That there's going to be a $20,000 prize pool for Twisted Tees. Are you kidding me? It's part of the Twisted Tees College Football Picks Contest, free to enter. You'll make six picks and earn points for each correct pick. Where can people go? To FanDuel.com. It's kind of like what we're about to do. Right? A man named Conrad, sorry. Last night he goes to get a haircut, and in his defense, he did not request this, but this is. Lord! Lord Jesus, it's a fall. Who did this to you, man? Look at you this. Went bag. To super cuts. <laughs> you went to supercuts. You went to supercuts. Oh. Okay, so this is Tebow. Do we do the San Diego Padres guy? Yeah, there he is. Oh. I hear they're casting for another Dumb and Dumber movie. Hey, lady, could I get the Mark Davis? Oh. Oh, my goodness. The Mark Davis. Yeah. The barber gets two red cars. He's out for the next game. And you get a red car for allowing this to happen. <sighs> Welcome to the barbershop. Conrad <laughs> Company is here with me. How did we convince you to let me shave your head? I don't know. I'm I'm almost positive this is still a fever dream. And uh, I'm just waiting to wake up. <laughs> Conrad got the worst haircut. Let's keep it. Conrad got the worst haircut I've ever seen. And Mark... Ingram made fun of it. Everyone made fun of it. So we decide, how do we shave his head? Because it only it's really out of love. Because Yeah, this is all out of love, 100%. It um, kind of is, because you'll look. I think you'll look great with a shaved head. Oh, you I, have never had a shaved head, ever? No, I have. I, I, that's what, bas basketball back in the day? Yeah, this is, uh, this is absolutely amazing. Okay. I am so looking forward to this, uh, clearly. Well, here's what we're going to do. What you don't know is that you know, we couldn't just shave your head, because it no. doesn't make any sense for a television show. Uh -uh. We know we can do whatever we want here. <laughs> on Up and Adams, but uh, Hamilton and I cooked up some questions. Hammer is here standing by as part of this fever dream. I mean, what's weirder, this or Hamilton having a cat on his lap yeah. trying to do a segment where we can't pull up the footage? Oh, what's man. Uh, I mean, <laughs> what's weirder? What's weirder? There, there, there is a right question here. 
So here's the deal. For, we want to buy you a lot of time. I've never okay. done this before. I don't know what I'm doing, but we've agreed whatever I do up here today, Conrad is going to keep until the weekend. So yeah. you're going to have to yep. you know, walk around bougie, bougie LA in your little neighborhood, and people are going to be seeing you looking like this. So you're trying to buy yourself as much time as possible, Conrad, yeah. for me to take my time and get as much done as I cue ball you over there. Ready? Yep. But we're going to ask you questions at Hamilton Trivia. is, and you're going to buy yourself 10 seconds per correct question. Oh, here we go. Uh, and then we'll figure out what your time is. And, and Marissa is standing by keeping track of time. So let's do this. All right, Hammer, hit me. All right, here we go. First one. Kay is obsessed with this actress from Hacks and Mayor of Easttown. She sat next to her on a flight to L.A. and almost fainted. What? <laughs> That's the best the first question you guys hit Marissa me. Marissa knows it. That's it's it. It's on the group text. Oh, it's, wow. on, it's on the group text. So that's that's wow. one. Right. Okay, so there's there's the first patch. Yep, there's the, the first. The answer right. is Jean Smart, and she's brilliant. And I almost fainted. Jean Smart. I never would. Okay, next next <laughs> no. question. This is next. Wow. Next question. <laughs> so uh, we also have some football questions sprinkled oh, in. Great. Yeah. From uh, their Packers and Titans themed questions in honor of Thursday Night Football. So, question number two: Who led the 1932 Packers in Russia? All right, would that be Alan Amici? Uh, Clark Hinkle. Clark Hinkle, yeah. How did I know Clark Hinkle. Uh, uh, you got two. no time. All right, so 0 for 2. All right. All right, here we go. Right. Question number three. Kay sent you a care package last week when you were out sick. Name five, five items from that care package. Five items. Uh, hauls, bottles of water, uh, Twizzlers, uh, <laughs> Twizzlers, and then I also had Gushers, and then she also sent me Pop-Tarts. <laughs> That's five. There we go. There That's we go. ten seconds. Oh, accurate. Doctor's orders. Definitely, All right. definitely felt better afterwards. What do you got? All right, here we go. Question four. Who, who scored the game-winning touchdown for the Houston Oilers in the 1960 AFL Championship game? Oh, it's definitely. Oh, these are mean. It's not Campbell. Oh, man. No, I don't. Give him a hint. All right, here we go. Uh, he was a Heisman Trophy winner. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, nope. Oh, that, boy. That. Can, can, keep going. Yeah, you know, uh, we're going, we're not, going, uh, shot. Billy, it, it's oh. Billy Cannon, the old LSU no, star you know one, from, how, how, you know, how in the yeah, world did I not get that one? That right. one's on me. Thanks, thanks for that one, Hammer. <laughs> you know what? I thought you were such a good but, dude. All right, let's go. <laughs> Question number five. What is the password to Kay's cell phone? The password to Kay's cell phone? Everyone knows yes. my, the password. You don't know the password to my cell phone? Three wow. four three four three four there's, three. There's, Can we give him that? He kind of said it. We'll give it. We'll give him. I'll allow it. Four, three, All right, four, we're up to three, twenty four, seconds. Three, three, four, three, Sorry, yeah. Qu Darren Qu Sproles, who's on the show question, tomorrow? Uh, on the show tomorrow. Question number six. Aaron Rodgers has four MVP awards. Who's the only player in NFL history with more? Peyton Manning. You are correct. Peyton Manning has 30 five. Thirty seconds, baby. Thirty seconds. All right. Question number seven. Everyone always says that your actual given name, Conrad Company, should be a business name. It turns out it is. What does the Conrad Company in Memphis, Tennessee manufacture? Conrad Company. You never looked this, you don't know this? No, I'm a one of one, Kay. I'm a one of one, well, at least I thought I was a one of one. <laughs> the, thing I, the thing I was Airplanes? on. Airplanes? Airplane parts, yes. Air, airplane parts, yes. Are we giving them that? Yes. Is that uh, no, we're not getting no, that. Okay, no, we're not. Uh, uh, wow, this is a tough Okay. <laughs> you guys are the on worst. Question. I'm trying to help you. I gave you the easy questions. Gene's smart. Like, on the question, oh our God. judges are saying no. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. No worries. More patches. Hamilton's sitting on right, high and mighty because yeah. he had to shave his beard once on Good Morning Football, and now he thinks he's been there and done that, and he rules the True. world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Question number eight. This longtime coach spent six seasons as the head coach of the Green Bay Packers before moving out to Texas A&M where he coached Ryan Tannehill for four years. I literally don't know what you're Ryan Tannehill at Texas A&M. Oh, um, um, Ke Kevin, that's not Sumlin. Um, it's not Kevin Sumlin. Before Sumlin. Bah. All right. We're out of time. Mike Sherman is the answer. Mike we're Sherman. For. Uh, Mike Sherman. Let's go to let's go to this tweet. What yep. do you got, Hammy? We ha we got we a got tweet. Him. Let's see. <laughs> Conrad <laughs> looks like he's being held against his will. That is not, it is, not it is false. True. No, this is like something out of Saw. There, yeah, no, there, like seriously, there's a reason you can't see my feet. It's because I'm chained to the chair. Do you want to play a game? I, I do not want to play a game. You should have had Kay <laughs> on a little tricycle with uh, some red circles on her cheeks. <laughs> next time, amount, next time. I wear the same amount of makeup as that jigsaw. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> next up. All right, next one. 
Uh, it took us weeks to come up with a name for this show. Name three names we considered before Oven Adams. See, Marissa's appreciating my questions, and you don't. It's uh, Keeping Up With Kay Adams. That, that, that was definitely <laughs> one that was very high up there on the charts. Right, you know, it wasn't. Um, good, good vibes with Kay Adams. And then it was also, uh, I think it was just the Kay Adams show. That's those, 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 those are three, those, those are three things that were there. The upside was All the right, other there we go. The we're upside. up to 40 seconds. The upside seconds. was the favorite. They're sticky. We are up to 40 seconds, okay. so here we go. Question number 10. Even though he was mostly a linebacker in his playing days for the Steelers, Patriots, and Chiefs, Mike Vrabel also got work at tight end. He caught 12 career touchdown passes. Ten were from Tom Brady. Who threw him the other two? Was it Matt Castle? Or now Alex Smith? It Alex was. Smith. Was it? Ah! Yeah. Yeah, she's a good was shot. Matt Castle. <laughs> we are up to 50 <laughs> seconds. We're doing good. Okay. All right, here we go. Lightning round. What is Taylor Fuse's mom's name? Taylor Fuse's mom's name. I'm just going to go with... Uh... Are you kidding me? <laughs> she's a huge fan of the show. Are you kidding Always me? Always likes our tweets. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, thank you. You're embarrassing. Oh, there we go. What's my mom's We're name? We're off to a minute. Does your mom tweet the show every day? Uh, no. Right. Mom, get on it. All right, last one, last What's one. What's my mom's name? Matt LaFleur's, <laughs> Matt LaFleur's first NFL coaching job was as an offensive assistant for the Houston Texans, where he developed a close friendship with which other current NFL head coach? I mean, it's not McVay, is it? No. McVay was started in Washington. It is not. It is not. The answer is Kyle Shanahan. This is it? We're done? Oh, boy. I, honestly, I'm really happy I got a minute. Um, Hammer, I cannot wait to talk with you after the show. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> that was, that was, that was no great. No problem, man. All right. Um, <laughs> no, no problem, man. Where do, where, where do we start all, with Conrad this? does look like he's being held against you. He's, you're, you're, you're they're, they're, yeah. No, I'm not. I don't want to, you, I don't want, I don't want to do it unless you were, you were happy about it. All right, yeah, I'll all right. No, I'm good. I'm out of here. Really? No, of course. No, sure. shave it. Give it to me, Kay. Now I feel a little, okay. Give it, Give it to me. Give it to me. I just feel a little bad about it. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, the truth is, Conrad takes everything very seriously, and we didn't, something didn't fire in the first segment about the Packers that we were supposed to do, and you came in here heated. Oh, heated, boy. Heated. <laughs> Let's Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. All Let's right. shave we're this bad this. boy. Do anybody want to teach me how to do this? No? Nobody? <sighs> is there any right? Anybody? Does anybody know? Like this? Don't or be like taking this? the seconds off, guys. She hasn't started. What do you do, Go, though? go front to back. What do you mean? Like Just this? Just go front to back, yep. Just like at your head? Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's coming off now. <laughs> oh, this is great television. This is amazing! Keep it going. Are you sure? Oh, yep. yeah, I have to, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. No, wait, do we want? <laughs> yeah, keep, K. don't you stop <laughs> now. Are you sure? Are yes. you sure? Keep it going. You, but what if we get one of those like little things no. that guys and boys have? You're, you're, try, you're trying well, to give me the McPatchy. Hey, no, take it, take it. <laughs> take it. Just, just please, leave. just keep going. Can we just leave Just this? please keep going. Okay, 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 I got you. I got you, I got you, I got you. Okay, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. I can't it. help the bowl. The bowl in the back is so strong. It just wants to be a bowl. You look good! <laughs> oh, I feel, hold on, let me I fix feel like, that. I feel like I'm 18 again. Uh, I think you look great. Oh, yeah, this is... Wait, did I do okay? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Hold on, come back. I need, that, I need that mirror. Can I get that back? We got it. We have a mirror. This oh. right. That. Hold on. Look straight. Oh, my God. Uh, you did. You gave, me, you gave me, like, the bowl cut in the middle. No, I didn't. Why are you? What are you saying? I'm the only one that cares enough about you to say that you cannot walk around the way you were looking. They're no, yelling I, at me that I'm giving you bonus time. Bo bonus Why time is allowed. Yeah, it is allowed. Oh, you, you have an IFB in? Oh, what yeah. What do you do up here? Do you have to, like, wipe this out? Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. So, I'm just going to say this, and this is going to... This is not hard. No, it's not. So, I'm just saying, like, whatever happened here, this is not a difficult thing. I'm actually quite enjoying it. All right, well, we'll be back. We have Rich Homie Kwan and Eric Weddle on the show. Eric Weddle, you need a beard trim? I got you after this. You look awesome. This is, looks good. <laughs> Are you freaking out? No. You look good. Thank you. You look, you look good. Thank you. Juan and Eric Weddle on the show. Eric Weddle, you need a beard trim? I got you after this. I did a good job. I mean, you're giving me Ryan Lochte. You're giving me um, Brad Pitt Fight Club. It looks great. Yeah, that's me wearing sweatpants to my job. And... <laughs> And that's it. And do we have a tweet? I think somebody's saying that he looks like 
Oh, we saw it. Carson Wentz, how do you think? Oh. oh. What? What is wrong with that comparison? Wow, strong takes. Oh. Uh, from from Conrad here on the set. All right, we got to talk uh, a little more football. We got a big game tonight, Titans Packers. Of course, Conrad, are you like going to go to the control room? Or yeah. Why don't you just walk through? It's fine. Everything's great. Why don't you walk into edit and see what's what's up with? The, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the video for us. <laughs> with the video. I can't tell. I can never see Conrad like this. Uh, okay, so we have to, you know what we're going to do? We're going to bring one of our family members. That's right. We're not going to talk about any rewards. The reward is hanging out with our guy, a two-time All-Pro safety, six-time Pro Bowler, Super Bowl champion, and University of Utah legend Eric Weddle. Do you need a beard trim? I'm available. Uh, I, you, never in a million years will you touch my beard. Only for to touch the magic of it, but... Not cutting it. No, 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 Not no. cutting it. Do you trim that thing? What's your maintenance on that bad boy? I do, yeah. I got a barber. He, uh, every two weeks, I, I get it uh, trimmed up. Maybe and if he's not preserved. there, if he's not there, if he's like, you know what, I'm going to Greece for four weeks, do you just not, not, you just? No, I can groom it. I can, I can okay. do it myself, but it, it's not anywhere near presentable. Love uh, it. As you should be, so. Well, you're presentable, and so, by the way, are your youths, <laughs> baby, laying the smackdown on Stanford this weekend. What's going yeah. on there? I mean, we uh, we got a big game this week, Stanford. I mean, Stanford's got they're they're in uh, a little, little of a turmoil there the last few seasons, which is kind of odd with Coach Shaw and, and uh, the the recruiting classes they have there. But we're rolling right now. We got a big game against Oregon and uh, Pac-12 championship on the line. We're playing well, and uh, we'll go up there and uh, take it to them. Utah's number 10, I'm reading, in college football playoff <clears throat> rankings. Number 10. Very yes. impressive in the top 10, so congrats to them, and I'm sure having you there Thank is such you. a treat. Uh, okay, it is week 11 officially. It's the midpoint of the NFL season, and, I, you know, we got to talk a little bit about your Rams team. Team, You know, I had a little a couple of concerns, but now they need a win, right? You know, I need the Eric Weddle State of the Union of the Los <laughs> Angeles Rams right now. What is going on? Uh... Well, it's it's a combination of things, right? Uh, you know, injuries, the Super Bowl. Uh, you know, I, I can't pinpoint one thing. Uh, I think the defense is still playing at a high level uh, outside of that 38-second uh, drive uh, from the Bucks, which took away a win. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough when you can't run the football consistently and for whatever reason it is that's that's just the way uh that the rams are right now and it's tough to to have play action it's tough to have movement and the the the, the turnover the injuries on the offense line the continuity i mean that's the most important in my mind right is the offense and defensive line you build your team from the inside out and when you lose the guys that we lost last year from from the the team you had corbett leave you had uh Obviously, big wit retiring, mm -hmm. and then you you replenish the offense line, but then you had injuries. Allen misses a bunch of games. No booms out for the rest of the year. So, uh, you just got to manufacture wins at this point and do whatever it takes. Special teams got to got to pick it up. Defense has to continue playing at a high level, and, and the defense has to take an approach. I've been on teams where the offense had struggled at times, and the defense has to take the approach that we can't give up any points, literally, and and that's okay. You take that approach. You take that challenge that uh, 10 points or less is what's gonna get it done for us to win right now until we turn things around. And that's why it's a team game. No one's gonna uh, jump ship. Yeah. You know, Sean's gonna continue leading them and continue grinding. And you know, the, it's it's not over by any means. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're champs for a reason. And, and until we're mathematically eliminated, we're gonna continue to fight and continue to put our best foot forward each week. And I think, you know, that they're three and six, their last place in the NFC West. The schedule is not kind. I wouldn't question the will. I would question just the manpower on it both. You mentioned their run game does not exist, and it's because of the offensive line you're talking about. Now, now if they got Whitwood back in the mix, <laughs> then I'd say maybe I, I'm believing in something. But uh, it seems super, super hard. But I love that you always have the faith, and it's really a testament to, to what, your, what your experience was with that team, that you are so unrelenting to jump ship from them or really even place blame on anything, I think it's really cool because I ask you about it every time I see you. And I, I think <laughs> yeah. it's a very, it, it really speaks larger to your experience. And you've been in lots of locker rooms, really good yeah. ones, not great ones. 
and what you what your experience that you had there in a short period of time uh, was like, and I think that that speaks volumes. Uh, tonight right, we got a game though. That. Titans, yeah, baby. Eric, traveling to Lambeau to face the yes. Packers. I'm sure you got great memories there. Now, Green Bay, they've allowed the most rush yards in the league since week four. And Derrick Henry, <laughs> he's got the yeah. second most rush yards <laughs> this year. So if I do the math, the question becomes, how can the Packers sort of adjust and minimize Henry? Well, you, you have those type of games, those matchups throughout the league, and you look at the stats and, and – Weeks pile up and you say, gosh, this run defense isn't, isn't very well and they're going against the top ranked run, run offense. This is it's going to be bad. And then it's usually the flip side. They usually the defense steps up, uh, they, they take the challenge, they have a great game plan, and they minimize uh, the opponent for that week. So I wouldn't be surprised if Green Bay puts a great plan together with Joe Barry and uh, limits as best he can. Uh, the running game for the Titans because that's how they win games. They run the ball. They play great defense. They don't turn the ball over. That's Mike Grable. That's that's how they play. They're tough, physical, smart. Uh, so I think the Green Bay's got to control the clock and score. Like okay, we can't sit back and wait wait till the second half to to start opening it up. And uh, I think that will help them if they can get a lead. That will minimize the running opportunities for the Titans. Tough run defense for those Titans. Let's put a little closer digging into this game. We're going to put on our dun -dun -dun safety goggles. We like to dig into a matchup that you're paying <laughs> close attention to. What do you got for us? I got the uh, Titans front seven versus Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones is a talented running back. Not only inside uh, the running game, perimeter run, inside running game, he can take it to the house at any moment if you're not sound on your defense. He has the speed to take it all the way. He has the moves, he has the cutback ability, but also the element that he brings outside of uh, in the passing game. He, he plays like a receiver. I mean, look at that catch up the sideline, an out and up uh, play uh, for a touchdown. So I'm interested to see if I'm the Titans, I wholeheartedly go all out to stop the run and, and Aaron Jones because mm -hmm. of the success they had last last week with the running game and set up the play action passes. The reality is those receivers on Green Bay are still young. They're still uh, green. And to say that they've arrived is, is a far statement. So if I'm the Titans, they got a great run defense. I, I put all my focus on Aaron Jones and limit his big play ability because like I said, at any moment, he could take it to the house and, and make a big play for Green Bay. And we saw last week get Christian Watson gaining lots of confidence doing his thing, three touchdowns against a Cowboys defense. So if they do sell out, stop the run, and it's on Watson, it'll be so fun to watch tonight to see if he can do it under the bright lights yeah. of Thursday night be football. Good to watch. Uh, who wins tonight? And is Andrew Whitworth doing a Lambo leap? Because I need to see that on that pregame show. <laughs> I would love to see that, that athletic specimen. Uh, I have Green Bay. Uh, I have Green Bay winning only because of the momentum. I think that was a, a, a season-changing win last week yeah. for the Green Bay Packers, and I think they ride that momentum. I, I think it's important to have another game on the uh, at home on a Thursday night is a huge advantage. So I have them. I've been totally wrong all season. So <laughs> if I'm picking, do the opposite. So Tennessee, you may Wait. you may have just guaranteed a win. Eric, are you saying, and I'm, we're going to, you don't love Twitter, but this will go and live on Twitter, <laughs> and it'll start right here. We're going to put a, are you saying that Andrew Whitworth doesn't have what it takes tonight at Lambeau to jump in that crowd in Lambeau Leap? No. I'm saying, I know you want me to try to rile him up and... <laughs> You know, that's my guy. And, you know, I've been I've been around the block a few times. So, OK, nice try. But my guy can do anything he puts his mind to. And if he wants a Lambo leap tonight and be uh, the star of the show after Green Bay wins, he's going to do it. He's going to do it, baby. I don't think he can. Andrew, I don't, th I, <laughs> I don't think he can do it. I think uh, he'll, he'll need a step stool. I think he'll need a crowd surf oh, wow. to get That's there. So, Andrew, let, let's definitely see what you not. got. No, he's the best. We love him. And, and uh, the only place I'd rather see him than, well, he could do both. He could moonlight and still do Thursday Night Football and play for the Rams. He can do it all. So, well, you know. He, you know, he's, well, he's one of a kind. So, I wouldn't, wouldn't put it past him. But he is about 270. So, he, he has a long way to go to get back up to 315. And, yeah. Block those edge rushers. So I, I think that's that ship has sailed, and rightfully so. He was 
He deserves it. It's so true, and he's doing amazing uh, on Amazon as well. All right, you are amazing at this next part. It's what the people come for, what they want. Grit list. Let's do it. We have a new grit list. We retired the first half of the season. That's no more. See ya. They had they had a great run. B Wags, I love you. Keep leading them, boys. The the season will turn around, and I am in awe of your play. This one, okay. We got Justin Fields right here. This isn't. Uh, this wasn't the play. I mean, this is a great play truck in the end zone. I was looking for the 67 yard touchdown, but anyways, this is number uh, Number three on the list or is this number one? I can't remember. It's number one, baby. Is it number one? Okay, number one This is the first. Okay, number one. Fields is, is literally taking that team on his shoulders and outside of maybe the Eagles Schematically, he they are by far the funnest team to watch. Yeah. Okay, we got we got A Rob putting his life on the line right here. <laughs> okay, this is grit. This is grit to me. It's saying, hey, we are having a terrible season so far. Everyone's writing us off. I'm gonna do my part and throw my little baby shoulder in there and my little helmet, yep. and I'm gonna try to do what's best for the team and show my teammates, hey, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And number three, we got Matt Ryan. Woo! The the longest run of his career. Look at him run. It, it would be a debate right now. Him versus Phillip Rivers, who would win in a race? Because I think they would be dead, dead even on how slow these two are. Mm. But to come back with the turmoil and uh, this the, is it. the negativity. There's our top three right there. Grit list. Let's see who can take those three spots next week. Uh, you know, you gotta be a you gotta be amazing, tough, tough. mentally incredible person to like make conrad greatest. like conrad for letting me shave his head on national seriously television. conrad like you just went up a couple notches in my book he might real. be in the grit on the grit list you told me i can never go near your beard <laughs> eric Weddle, you're awesome enjoy tonight andrew whitworth i don't think you got the hops i don't think you got what it takes no i'm kidding i love you uh, and you can of course tweet up an adam show if you see something gritty tonight all right we've got more up and adam's coming up i'm taking off the the shop bar, you know mav carter you can borrow this tonight we got rich homie quote on the show, new music dropping tomorrow. Can't wait to get into it. All things Atlanta next. Woo! Welcome back to the Up and Adam show. Let's do it. We've got a very special guest. He's an award-winning rapper, an Atlanta native, creator of a new label, What? Taken over with Rich Homie Entertainment. He's got a revamp album, Family Moolah Reloaded, dropping tomorrow. The Adlib King, Rich Homie Quan. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. How you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. Congratulations. How are you feeling? You have new music tomorrow. Quan, what are we getting? And congrats on the release. Uh, what are you getting from the new music and uh, a lot of storytelling? Uh, more ad libs from the ad lib king, of course. Yes. Um, me still feeling some type of way about a whole lot of new things, new stories. Um, uh, basically Quan evolving on a Atlanta down south. 808 hard hitting instrumentals. Okay, we love that. I know, you know, you are Atlanta. You are Atlanta. And I know, I know, Quan, that you are you bleed Falcons. But why do I keep seeing interviews where you are repping or talking about your love for the Chiefs? Are you a Chiefs fan? What's up? Oh I love the Chiefs. I love the Chiefs. See, I'm a fan of winners. I know I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm from Atlanta, so like, you know, Atlanta's just sent me a lot of Falcons to Dell. We're going to be winning like that. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? We're going to be winning like that. And them boys know I love them. I was just at the soccer game a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Kyle Pitts is my man. Uh, Cody uh, Patterson. Nice. Uh, so yeah, like, you know, yeah, Yeah, so I, I love the Falcons. But the Chiefs are just something different, man, especially when they get in playoff mode. So, you know, the Chiefs and the Warriors, they're just, they're just different when the playoffs come. Who's your favorite you know Chief? Uh, who's my favorite Chief? Uh-huh. Uh, Mahomes? Of course, everybody loves Pat Mahomes. Um, like number seventeen, uh, my, uh, what's his McCall name? Hardman, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's my dog right there. He's got like Georgia like, boy. Yeah, see, you see, you see, you see the relation. Yeah. That's so, it's, so that's yeah. okay as long as he's from from way of Georgia to the Chiefs. It all makes sense, and nobody yeah, no. else so, so can be mad at you. So it makes sense why I rep them the way I it makes sense <laughs> the way I rep them why I do. It's true. Now we've seen a bunch of NFL players over the years yeah. put out their own rap albums. Yes, like, ma'am. Le'Veon Bell. We saw Antonio Brown, Melvin Ingram. How yeah. do you feel about players doing that? Be honest. Um, be honest, I think it's dope. Uh, you know what I mean? 
I don't think uh, the people, the fans, take it as serious because they're already, quote-unquote, solidified. But I've heard some talented athletes, artists, like uh, Dame Lillard, for example. Dope bar. Okay. Dame can really spit. Um, even like the song, I think yesterday they was playing, I saw on Instagram, um, KD and LeBron had a song. And I mean, I thought KD bars, I feel like KD could rap if he was to pursue that. You know what I'm saying? LeBron bars felt like a uh, more like... <laughs> Old school Run DMC, but I felt like KD was on some, you know what I'm saying? He could hang, you know what I mean? So I don't have nothing against you. I don't have nothing against it at all. I think it's dope. But like, uh, but you're dope. not going out there trying to route fools up, or you're not going out there trying to pretend that you can be an NFL player. It doesn't bother you at all. Like, what you think it's so easy, LeBron? You can just come in here and just, you know, this, this takes a lot of work to be the ad lib king. Yes, it does. It does. Um, and I, uh, like I say, of course, I'm not trying to go out there and run no routes or shoot mm -hmm. any walls, mm -mm. but. I think um, it's very rarely for it's very rare that you just see an athlete just break out for music, only because like I, some of them think it's so easy and it's so much little yeah. stuff that we have to do. There's so many tiny things we have to do, interviews, follow up on relationships, and with them guys being in the gym and working on the you know the crowd. There's no there's no off days in music, just like there's no off days in sports. So it's, it's kind of hard to try to juggle the two. Yeah, now Atlanta's obviously home to so many talented R&B, hip hop, rapper, artists over the years, and you yourself one of the greats from Atlanta. Now in sports, yes. where I work, we love lists. We love <laughs> top five quarterbacks, top five teams, yeah. top five, you know. I know yes. this is tough, but I want to hear your top five artists from Atlanta ever. Top five from Atlanta ever. That's a, I, that, that's crazy. Like nobody's ever ever asked me that. What? I would give myself number five, and this is no particular list, but I would definitely include myself in there. Like top five ever. Uh, we gotta throw Ti in there. So that's two. Gucci Man. I would definitely say Future. Wow. Um, Outcast. Okay, Outcast. No, no. Okay, Outcast is two. Like that's, that's one. That's one. It's one. Is that? Yeah, so that's my five. Outcomes. So that's yeah. five. No Young Jeezy. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> I just knew, I knew uh, I was talking in the control room before the show. I go, he's going to put himself first. No, no, like, no, no question. I would never put myself Not first. Not first, I would but, never put myself yeah. first. And I, I usually don't even put myself on the list, but like, uh, over all time, I got to be on it. Right? Yeah. And you, and you should be. And you got new music dropping tomorrow. New Family music and Lula. Friday. Reloaded. Yes. Uh, your love for Atlanta, while we're talking about it, I know that it runs so deep, and the music world continues to mourn the death of Takeoff, and I'm so, so sorry yeah. for your loss. Uh, what was it like to have all of Atlanta come together like that? It was amazing to have Atlanta to come like that for Takeoff loss. It was, But it was sad that we had to come together in that type of situation. I wish we could come together without it having to be a deal. You know, I wish we can come together just because it's Wednesday, you know. And I, um, that definitely hit me, uh, not kind of hard, but it hit me hard. Mm -hmm. Only because, like, uh, take off the Migos, our career started, like, at the same time. Mm -hmm. I remember sitting, I remember sitting um, in Gucci's man studio on the couch before any of us have a dollar to our name, before any of us know anything about an entertainment lawyer or just the music business in general. So that one hit a little hard, like. That one hit like, it, it hit me hard. What was the one up. moment from the memorial that sort of stayed with you or stood out to you? Um, I would definitely say when Offset spoke, Offset's, uh, Offset's speech, it was very emotional. And you could tell it was heartfelt. Mm. It was heartfelt. It was heartfelt. It was nice though, from Justin Bieber singing it. Mm -hmm. um, and like, it was pandemonium. Like, he waited probably like three minutes before he even saw like a Michael Jackson moment. And with them doing it at the, uh, the State Farm Arena, I think that was dope to send them up out of here the right way, you know. So yeah. rest in peace to take off. Of course, and you, I, bet, I bet it gave you a lot of perspective. You are mentioning you, you came up with Migos while you don't even know what an entertainment lawyer was. And now I'm yes. looking at you, and you recently became an independent artist. Whole, yeah. like, you are now your own boss. You started your own label, Rich Homie Entertainment. That's the dream. Yes, yeah, it's a dream, but it comes with a lot of work, too. And at the end of the day, like, it's something I've always wanted. But with me being in the game for 10 years, I've uh, been through a lot of adversity. I've learned a lot. I've definitely seen every side of the sword. But 
the independence out of the sword. So it was something new for me. I was excited to take it, and I feel like I have yet to scratch the surface. And this is my time to, you know, really get my flowers and really get what's yeah. rightfully due to me if I do it the right way. It's really true, and I know that, you know, you're not just an inspiration in that way in the musical community. I looked it up because when I saw that, there are 17 players acting independently, and there are just 17 as their own agents. Lamar Jackson, of course, a huge yeah. one. He's due. He wants his contract. So what yeah. you're doing is inspiring other people to sort of take things into their own hands. But you inspire, yeah. you, inspire you know, lots of athletes. Of course, people are... Uh, singing and having you, you know, you in their ear AirPods for the game. Uh, I thought it was very cool. You're featured on a YG song, uh, of yeah. course, that Deion Sanders has since made his anthem down at Jackson yeah. State. What is that like to you to see what Prime is doing? Oh, uh, man, it's crazy to see what Prime is doing, especially for, like, Prime. And this before he's coached Prime, so, you know, uh, this is more Deion uh, Prime time. You know what I'm saying? Prime time. Uh, I have a picture painted of him in my house like this before. Like It was a big inspiration as far as me playing sports. Wow. Growing up, I played baseball and and football because of Prime. You know, so uh, he was a big inspiration to me. But what he's doing for uh, HBCUs, I think it's truly, truly uh, in inspirational, motivational. And, like, it took a leap of faith to do that. So like it just showed me like he's fearless. He's fearless. He's he still motivated me off the field. So I man, I love Coach Prime. I'm, I've yet to meet him. I've yet to meet him. Coach Prime, we got to make that happen, man. You gotta, uh, with that being the song, Coach Prime, this is we told me, uh, you know, reaching out, man. Let, let's walk out to the real theme song, man. You know, my head, man. Let's do it the right way, Coach. Yeah, I can't believe you've never met him. That's wild. But there's so much mutual respect. I remember back in 2013 that Michigan State team. That yeah. you, were, you were at the Rose Bowl, you're cheering them on, you're celebrating in the locker room, they adopted your song. That must feel yeah. so cool to have a team carry that with you. And uh, and there's so much mutual respect there. Now give me really quickly the one song off of Family Moolah Reloaded, which is out tomorrow, new music yeah. uh, from Rich Homie Quant. Give me the one song that Chiefs should adopt from that album, from the new music for their 2022 Super Bowl run. I would say, me too. I would either say Legacy, or spin, and I say legacy because what they're creating right now, it's almost like a whole new, like, you know, back in the day, like, the Chiefs. Like, I haven't looked at the Chiefs since they had, like, Dante Hall yeah. uh, returning, you know what I'm saying? Throw the X up, uh, Dante Hall. So it's almost like they're creating a new legacy yeah. down there. And the other song I would definitely say is spin because every time they pull up on it, they're trying to spin the block on whoever team they play. Shout out to Andy Reeves. The offense, a guru, you know what I'm saying? Definitely shout out to Andy Reeves, man. Keep calling them plays. I just pray that everybody stays healthy. That's, you're amazing. Congrats on the new music. Congrats on the label, being an independent artist, living the dream. Uh, and you have so much perspective, and we just appreciate you stopping yeah. by. Congrats. Everybody, check out the new music, uh, the album Family and Moolah Reloaded, out, out tomorrow. Rich Homie Kwan, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So good to see you and to meet you. We got to get that. He's never met Prime. We got to get, we got to make that happen. Uh, not we. I mean, I have no pull. I'm, <laughs> we. We'll make, I'm, I'm Ellen. We'll make it happen. Great. Awesome show. Let's bring in Matt Hamilton for some hammer time. Hammer, I have been begging the Packers to run the ball for weeks now, and they were able to do it so well on Sunday. How did that happen? How did it help Rodgers? And can they keep it going against this tough Titans run D? So, Kay, it wasn't just that the Packers were running the ball. It was how they did it. 37 runs in that game, 21 were to the perimeter. Half of them had some type of motion shift or misdirection element. And that's what you're going to see here. Alan Lazard coming in jet motion. And look at what that does to the second level of the Cowboys defense. All eyes are on him. There's going to be a toss here to Aaron Jones. What they don't see is the key Josiah DeGuara, the tight end, blocking back the other way. So as you see here on the toss to Aaron Jones, Michael Parsons gets sucked inside. It allows Robert Tunyon to work up to him. And he seals, Tunyon seals his block beautifully. Mm -hmm. Bakhtiari does a great job. DeGuara does a great job. And okay. look at the lane created for Aaron Jones here. He's one-on-one -on -one with a corner in Trayvon Diggs. That's what you want one-on-one -on -one in the hole. Those corners don't want to tackle, and you'll see. Aaron Jones just puts his shoulder down, runs through contact, picks up a, a nice chunk play there for the Packers. And later on that drive, you're going to see them give the exact same look right here. Again, Lazard's going to come in that jet motion okay. and watch the second level of the Cowboys defense this time. 
Now there's a slight shift to that side, but they're not putting their eyes on Lazard. Their eyes are going to come back inside on Rodgers. See Rodgers reverse out from under center. All those guys are staring at him. They're expecting okay. now something to come back to the weak side again, something to hit inside. But uh -oh. this is where the Packers attack the perimeter with that toss out to Aaron Jones. And look at the leverage that creates that little bit of hesitation from the Cowboys at the second level allows the Packers receivers to down block, to seal off that edge. Lazard gets out and lead blocks for Jones. It's beautifully executed. You love the effort from the wide receivers to block in the run game, especially when the Packers weren't airing it out as much. Those guys are bought in right now to what's going on. They're playing physically on the perimeter. And what happens when you run the ball like this over and over again? Now the defense starts creeping up. You see a single high look here from the Cowboys. Play action from Rodgers. Even the single high safety is going to hesitate and bite on that play action. <laughs> Christian Watson's going to run a go at the bottom of the screen, and Rodgers is just going to throw a perfect ball. But you you never see teams, or in the past, we've rarely seen teams play single high against Rodgers because of his ability to, th to throw the deep ball like this. And Ooh. with the Packers establishing that run game the way that they did, <laughs> it opened things up for the pass like this and gave these receivers an advantage. Yeah. So this is exactly, this is why you have to run the ball. It's not be, just because it's working for the Packers and they're creative with it. Shades of, of McVay and Shanahan, which is how LaFleur was schooled, but also because it opens things up for Rodgers and it gives these receivers an advantage, which they desperately need since they don't have as much talent at the position as they normally do. To your point, not just Aaron Jones, but A.J. Dillon, they ran together 75 times in that game against the Cowboys, 21 of those runs to the perimeter. Now I ask you, does FanDuel Sportsbook have something to talk about? They do. So they have Aaron Jones rushing line at 57 and a half yards. I know the Titans have a good run deep, but I really like the over. Uh, with, with Jones tonight. I think the Packers have to stick to that run game, and I think Jones will get some big plays against this defense. All right, there we go. Can we get the Hammer Time music? <laughs> Has this just been wired, just been hanging out here all day? It's fine. This is our show. Everyday wins make your day so much better. Excellent work from Hammer there. Reward Machines, a free game that gives players the chance to win up to $2,000 in casino bonus every day. FanDuel's Reward Machine already give away $5 million in prizes to over 250,000 winners. To get in on the action, all you gotta do is log in daily. And now you gotta do a spin. It's a free chance at rewards. FanDuel wants you to win, so play Rewards Machine for a free chance at Everyday Wins only on FanDuel Casino. And we'll see you tomorrow. Conrad, don't sue me.